Hence the reason why many of us never really realize peace because we're not seeking the righteousness of God. And you cannot walk in God's peace without walking in God's righteousness. And am I talking to anybody that you know what? You, you might have had money in the bank, but you still had no peace. You, you might have got a good doctor's report, but yet you had no peace. Maybe the problem is not because God does not love you, that God did not heal you, that God did not provide for you. But just maybe the problem is, is that you're not seeking God. God's righteousness first in your life. It's like these two cups, these two glasses I have here. One of them is positioned in a safe place because it's not on the edge of anything. And, 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 and when you're not on the edge, you can be more stable. There, there's something surrounding the entire bottom of this glass that keeps it stable and sturdy. But here comes this other rascal. And this one represents most of us in our lives. We start out right here in the middle with God. We grow up going to church and we've been taught the word of God. And, and most of us under the sound of my voice had some experience with God at an early age. You, you just didn't get saved yesterday. You didn't hear about Jesus last night. Hello, somebody. But, but because things were so peaceful in your life and you thought you had it made, you begin to push the edge a little bit more. And, and because nothing else happened, you figure, well, I'll go a little bit further. And, and, and when you did that sin, no, nobody caught it and nobody said anything about it. And, and you know what? You didn't get AIDS like other folk who did what you did do. Hello, somebody. You, you didn't get VD like other folk that got what you. Hello, somebody. You, so, so what you did, you pushed the edge a little bit more. Uh, and now you begin to curse and use profanity because nobody else caught what you were saying and nobody at the church knows that's how you really live your life. So, so what you begin to do is you begin to push the edge a little bit further. Uh, and, and before you know it, now you don't even come to church like you used to uh, because you figure, you know what, I can stay at home and catch the word on television. Hello, somebody. I mean, I work all week. I ought to be able to watch the word when I want it. I can, I can use the DVR and I can record it and play it back when I want. So, so I don't need no preacher yelling at me about what I'm doing wrong in my life. I'm going to pick and choose like a smorgasbord uh, and I only want to hear what I want to hear. Uh, and if Joel is preaching what I want him to hear, I'll listen to Joe. Hello, somebody. Uh, and if John Osteen, hello, somebody. And I got to go back to the old library and pull out one of his old tapes to get what I want. Hello, somebody. And if Jake's ain't talking about what I want, I won't listen to him. But, and so what you're really doing is you're pushing the edge that much further. Uh, and before you know it, you find yourselves uh, you're right on the verge of leaving God's house. You're, you're right on the verge of compromising your peace uh, because your position that used to be back here, hello, somebody, uh, you have repositioned yourself to the edge of things in life. Uh, and how you know that many believers make this tragic mistake because the reality is uh, we, we don't serve God like we ought to until trouble comes. Uh, it takes most of us going over the edge before we realize we need somebody to reach down and pick us up. Uh, but is there anybody in this church today that says, you know what, uh, I'm so glad you talked to me this morning, Pastor Harvin, uh, because I want to have real peace. I don't want to have peace uh, that I got to watch what I'm doing. Uh, I don't want to have peace that's on the edge all the time. Uh, and I'm always watching over my shoulder to see who heard what I said. I'm always watching over my shoulder. See who's going to catch me coming out of that club. I'm always watching over my shoulder, trying to see whether or not somebody coming out of that hotel caught me. Hello, somebody. I'm always watching over my shoulder, trying to make sure nobody knows that that's what I'm really doing. But is there anybody that says, Harvey and I, I need to not live on the edge. I need to put my life back in the center of things. I need Jesus to be the center of my joy. And when he's the center of my joy, he can be my peace. When he's the center of my joy, I can have comfort in him but most of us live right here and most of y'all can't even focus on the word right now because you're sitting there pondering just if he pushes that cup a little bit further it's gonna fall over and somebody gonna have to clean up that glass in the sanctuary and that's how God told me this that, that how our lives look we're on the edge we can't have peace because peace is often determined by the position that you have placed yourself in with God. Peace is determined by the positioning of your mind. And, and if your mind is not properly positioned, hello somebody, uh, you will never really have the peace that God wants you to have. Uh, you will constantly be looking at that thing that's not in the right position. Uh, you will constantly be staring at it. Uh, wondering if somebody just ruffled it a little bit more, maybe it'll tip over. Uh, maybe if somebody bumps into it, maybe it'll tip over. Hello somebody. Uh, because the, the thing in your life has not been properly positioned. Uh, that's the reason why we have to have our mind properly positioned. 
position uh, because the peace that this Bible is talking about uh, is not experienced by those uh, who live a contrary life. Uh, it's not experienced by those uh, who contradict the word of God in their living. Uh, it's not going to be experienced by those uh, who talk a good talk but don't walk a good walk. Uh, it's only experienced by those uh, who have their mind properly positioned in God. Uh, and no matter what the devil sends their way, uh, they don't allow the devil to move them. Hello, somebody. Uh, they remember how it was when they were living on the edge. Uh, they remember how it felt when they fell over. Hello, somebody. Uh, that's why the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, because not because all his steps were right. Hello, somebody. Uh, because that man used to not be so good. Uh, it's just that now that he is a good man, uh, now that he does love the Lord, uh, he realizes I can't live my life on the edge anymore. Uh, I've got to come back to sanity. Hello, somebody. Uh, I can't be in a relationship that don't glorify God. Uh, I've got to come back to sanity. Uh, I can't be in a relationship where somebody's beating on me. Uh, I've got to come back to sanity. Uh, I can't drink any and everything uh, and call myself a child of God. I've got to come back to sanity. Uh, I can't shoot drugs up in my body. Uh, I've got to come back to sanity. Uh, I can't use profanity out of my mouth. Uh, I've got to come back to sanity. Hello, somebody. God wants us to be in a position where we can enjoy the peace that he offers us. Most of us never get to this place because we choose to live on that edge.